Good morning, or hello again, rather. Um, this short clip is meant to guide your reading of Robert Graves' The Persian Version. And uh, just as I did with First Day at School by Roger McGough, uh, this uh, drawing some parallelisms with Sylvia Plath's daddy as a starting point for your um, reading of, of uh, this, of that poem. Um, in order to take the Persian version, I am going to draw your attention to um, When I Heard the Learned Astronomer by Walt Whitman. Now, if you recall, in um, that poem, that one stanza was divided into two, uh, creating a binary opposition between uh, the two worlds, the indoor world uh, of science and the outdoors uh, world of a personal experience and how those two interacted from the point of view of the speaker to create a certain parallelism uh, from which you could draw a number of binary oppositions. Well, in the Persian version, we have a similar um, approach uh, to the poem. You have read, of course, the um, historical background uh, on the battle that took place uh, in, in the year 495 before Christ and uh, how the uh, Athenian army um, was attacked by King uh, Darius, the king of Persia. Now, history tells us uh, of the uh, great army that the Greeks had and how brave they were, etc. Now, from the title of this poem, we are in for a different perspective, and that is the Persian version of events. Now, if you recall Whitman's binary oppositions, right, and remember that a binary opposition uh, is to contrasting ideas or, or words uh, and, and the like, like black and white, good and bad, etc. Um, we are going to have on one level two opposing perspectives uh, or, or two opposing uh, creations of um, that event. Excuse me. I'm sorry, we're back. Phone rang, uh, household issues and problems uh, and the like. Um, what I was uh, saying is that in, in this poem, we have uh, also a, a set of binary oppositions and I urge you to try to make a, a, a parallel account of how the speaker um, refers to the Persians and of course the speaker is on that side because the speaker is uh, the voice the narrative voice is providing an account from that perspective and how that speaker refers to the Greeks and notice all the, the words in, in, that, in that respect uh, you have truth loving Persians on, on the one hand and the Greek theatrical tradition on the other and so pay attention to that uh, to create this parallel. Um, in that respect, then, once you have that um, a set of ideas, you may encounter that all those ideas, that is, the ideas regarding the Persian version on the, on the one hand and on the other hand how the Greeks are depicted. Um, the two together 
create an instance of irony. Now, remember that when we talk about irony, we mean the expression of meaning using words that mean one thing to refer to words to, to uh, the opposite um, idea, right? And it usually creates sometimes humor, sometimes empathy. As a literary technique, um, it only works when it is um, obvious to the reader, right? And in this respect, because history has told us uh, what happened at the battle, how the events developed and the like that somehow creates irony on the part of uh, the whole poem. So on the one hand, then you have these two ideas, the Persian version on the one hand and the uh, Greek, por the portrayal of the Greeks on the other. When we put the two together, these binary uh, oppositions, the whole um, poem creates an irony. And where is that irony? That irony is in that we tell stories and uh, if you tell a different story that opposes the traditional perspective, on the one hand, that may make us think is what is history? How does history develop? Is history told from the point of view of the winners only? And I'll leave you uh, to think about that. Keep studying figures of speech, try to find figures of speech uh, here, but in this poem as uh, such, and this one particular poem uh, as, as such, you have a, a bigger picture, um, and that is how, through undermining the official version, there is a creation of um, a larger scale uh, irony. Think about that and keep studying, stay home, stay healthy, stay well.